Every day, a whopping $60 million worth of Happy Meals come out of Ronald McDonald's door. There's no doubt that Happy Meals have always been successful, but they haven't always been happy. In this video, we'll be trekking through the sad history of the Happy Meal, detailing all the troubles it experienced throughout the years. Watch till the very end of this video and you might find yourself saying no to happiness. Conception The Happy Meal found its start in a little town called Guatemala. The year is 1970. And McDonald's, as most American things do, has just started making its way into other countries. Aspiring franchisees Jose Maria Cofino Varedare and Yolanda Fernandez de Cofino got a whiff of the growing fast food giant and wanted a piece of the pie, establishing the very first McDonald's franchise in Guatemala. But there was a problem. Guatemalans weren't used to American portions, and this applied especially for kids. Parents would often go to the counter asking for the best-selling Big Mac, only to find out that the burger was the size of a young child's head. After a few hundred burgers were left unfinished by kids, Yolanda hatched a brilliant idea, Ronald's Menu. Ronald's Menu was introduced in 1977 and was the Happy Meal in all but name. Small fries, drinks, sundaes, and even smaller burgers were made available to kids with a smaller appetite. Then, as a loving touch, Yolanda would also include small toys bought from the local market. The idea was a smash hit. Yolanda had gotten the idea of a lifetime, and she wanted to share it with every other branch in McDonald's. And for that, she hopped on a plane and went to a convention in Chicago where she could present her idea to the head honchos at McDonald's. But her idea, as wholesome as it was, fell on deaf ears. That's because Bob Bernstein, advertising executive of McDonald's, had already found inspiration from the Happy Meal elsewhere. Fun Meal Fiasco To fully understand the sad conception of the Happy Meal, we need to go back all the way to 1973, where Burger Chef reigned supreme. And no, we're not talking about your part-time burger flipper, we're talking about the fast food giant that almost gave McDonald's a run for its money. Their dominance over the market relied on their iconic fun meal, a meal for kids which included fries, a small drink, small dessert, and a toy. Eerily similar to the Happy Meal we know and love today, even in terms of success. The fun meal was such a success that Burger Chef landed a deal with Star Wars to sell exclusive toys. But if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then McDonald's was singing praises. In 1979, McDonald's started selling the Happy Meal, a meal so similar to the Fun Meal that trademark lawyers started mobilizing as soon as the first Happy Meal box was sold. The Fun Meal concept itself was trademarked, and Burger King didn't want their competition cashing in on their success. McDonald's defense was simple, claiming that the conception of the Happy Meal was inspired by Bob Bernstein's son. Every day, Bob would see his son mesmerized by the colorful cereal boxes with activities during breakfast, and he wanted to give kids the same amount of enjoyment with their meal. After a long legal battle of two fast food giants throwing money at each other, McDonald's finally won by dismantling the trademark law that that Burger Chef had filed. Burger Chef had lost, and they lost hard. What once was a fierce competitor of McDonald's soon fell into obscurity, eventually being bought by Hardee's. This would have been a battle well fought if it weren't for future evidence coming to light, particularly in 2019 when a former senior VP of McDonald's just outright admitted that the idea of the Happy Meal did come from Burger Chef saying that the success of the Happy Meal was inspired by Burger Chef's success. He even approved it. Toys galore. But the Burger Chef imitations didn't stop there. Inspired by Burger Chef's Star Wars deal, McDonald's would partner with Star Trek for the movie release in 1979, marking their first ever pop culture collaboration. The collaboration was so successful that other 80s and 90s brands partnered up with McDonald's. Brands such as Super Mario Brothers, Pokemon, and Power Rangers all found a place in Happy Meal boxes. Brand collaborations were starting to look more and more lucrative, and Disney eventually signed on McDonald's as its promotional restaurant partner in 1997, a deal that's said to have generated over $1 billion for Disney. Leave it to Disney to sniff out the money. But as famous as Mickey Mouse was, no other Happy Meal sold out faster than the Beanie Baby Boom. Beanie Boomers The year is 1997, 
a year considered to be the peak of Beanie Baby mania. Beanie Babies are small collectible fur dolls that people used to fight over because of their rarity, and each type of Beanie Baby had its own rarity. Think NFTs, but you can actually hug them to sleep at night after spending hundreds of dollars on them. Soon, a new variation of Beanie Babies would come, small variations called Teeny Beanies. The success of collaborations eventually led to McDonald's partnering up with Beanie Babies to distribute these teeny beanies as a treat for their young customers. But to their surprise, more adults came barreling through the doors than children. A collaboration that was supposed to end in a month lasted only two weeks, as teeny baby supplies were siphoned out, leaving nothing for children to gawk at. But sales are never a bad thing, and McDonald's decided to try again in 1998. This time, McDonald's wanted to make it fair to the kids. By enforcing rules such as five Beanie Babies per purchase, and no return trips to the counter within two hours of ordering. McDonald's really is a kind and caring mega corporation. Surely it's also healthy for kids, right? Right? Think about the kids. In 2004, the fast food world shook when a documentary entitled Super Size Me was released. Super Size Me was a documentary following Morgan Spurlock's attempt to live off McDonald's, shining a harsh spotlight on McDonald's nutrition. More and more people started to take notice that McDonald's was oily, sugary, and nutritionally weak food. And worse, it was being served to our kids. At the time, childhood obesity had been growing more and more prominent. A fact that you really don't need a statistic sheet for, but we'll bring up a statistic anyway. In 2001, an astonishing 50% of a Happy Meal's calories were derived from fat. That's a lot of fat for just a single meal, let alone a kid's meal. This very same kid's meal also came with an oily beef patty, oily fries, and sugary drink. Of course, this meal wasn't exactly the worst meal on the menu, but no other meal was as attractive to kids as the Happy Meal was. Things got so bad that Disney, upon realizing the moral backlash, decided to end its partnership with McDonald's by 2006. McDonald's had to act on these nutritional deficiencies. And they had to act fast, since they could no longer afford to be seen as the leading cause for childhood obesity. Eventually, McDonald's would make minor changes to their menu items for the better, and a healthier Happy Meal was born. Fries were downsized even further, and parents were given the option to opt for apple slices as a healthy side dish. Instead of a sugary soda, children can now opt for milk or an even sweeter fruit juice. The Happy Meal was indeed healthier, but these changes were obviously not good enough. Selling burgers with toys to children is just never a good look. That's why in 2010, San Francisco passed a law that banned fast food restaurants from adding free toys to any meals. A lukewarm slap on the wrist that McDonald's just got over by charging an extra 10 cents to add a toy to the Happy Meal. But as far as nutrition slamming goes, our health isn't the only thing that matters. Our planet's health does too. Happy Meals are charming and fun to play with, but all these toys and boxes usually wind up in the same place every time, the junkyard. Through the years, McDonald's has sold millions, if not billions, of tiny plastic novelties with their Happy Meals and it's contributed to our planet's plastic pollution. To try and remedy this, McDonald's has made the promise to lower fossil fuel-based plastic by 2025. Some McDonald's even opted to include activity books instead of the usual plastic toys, a choice that's, in all honesty, a nightmare for kids, but a godsend for the environment. So the next time you find your kids begging for a Happy Meal, maybe it's best to get them a toy and a healthier meal instead.